Hi guys, Sam with Scrappy Industries and this is Big John. He came all the way from Iowa to help work on scrap. So we got us a snorkel electric scissor lift that will go 19-ish feet high to the platform we think. I traded my good friend Matt at Diesel Creek, a old scrap Cummins, and we got us a man lift. It just doesn't work. So first step is see what it does do. Big John, what do you think? The word is that the, the electric motor pump works. Some of the functions may work up to a certain point. It has no power. We'll throw some batteries in it. It needs 24 volt of some sort, so see what happens. The serviceability on this thing's pretty cool. There's these little latches and everything underneath just slides right out. So that is the pump, hydraulic tank, some brains, I guess, and the valving. This is your emergency down valve for when it all dies. And the other side has a battery tray. Ta-da! So we have these two bolt-on style Group 31 batteries, nice and freshly tendered. I think they'll be the hot ticket. I need to make a circle of power here. And I'll put this one in the other way. So if we hook up the negative there, positive there, and our jumper wire over here. Is this little guy just the hot ticket? Oh yeah, we're gonna make that work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. I think this has been done. Hey, look at that. Alrighty. Contact. I think that's what Matt says, that it goes up until it hits the one switch, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like clicking. Yeah. It is stuck. Well, apparently that's our first step, is how is the manual override supposed to work? Oh, you know what? There's two things here. So there's that handle and there's this valve. You turn that, and pull that, or push that, or something. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I hope no one's stuck up high. <laughs> right. Because they're not coming down anytime soon. I don't know, let's do a little ring. It's like, don't go under it, because who knows? So we ran the manual override, which turned out to be on the right side of the scissor to lower it. John thinks this contactor for the e-stop is doing something strange. I think that it would only push it. I mean, we could check it with the meter, but I think this should be normally closed. Yeah, it's normally closed. So that means that when the e-stop goes in, it's gonna open that. So that's not gonna be any issue to us at the moment. You can see if the manual raise down here still works. Yeah. Although it seems mad. Still no down, even right there. Uh -uh. So we have one. Oh. This is like a steer clear. What do we have over here for a valve? This is the manual override that finally worked. If you push on this, that's what lets it down. But it takes quite a bit of force. And that must be the same valve that it normally uses to drop, right? Because you got a wire coming into the solenoid. Oh yeah, that just is the solenoid for the drop, which worked one time. Let's start with like oiling that. Like it is stiff. Sam, what are you doing? Lube in the solenoid, you know. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? So basically the way this works from what I see here is any man lift or something with people in it, there's gonna be a valve 
at the cylinder so that if, if this hose were to explode, you don't come sailing down, that you're not relying on hoses. So this one, it looks like it has some sort of valve here that's solenoid actuated. This is the solenoid body up here. And then this is the manual override. So under normal circumstances, the lower, you get power here and it activates the solenoid valve and that lets it lower. But this thing is like super stiff. So what I'm trying to do is free it up. But if we picked it up and put that safety in it, would it be? <laughs> oh, that's much better. Basically, I just oiled that. I just oiled that solenoid and now let's see what happens. That is much happier than it was. Maybe we ought to try to free up like those limit switches. It's like the Hawes homing switches. You gotta lube those things up and kind of work. See if you can lower it with the switch now that that, that, that manual deal is more free. Get anything. Uh, no, I can turn it off. That's weird that it was working. How is it that hit or miss? Sam, what do you see in there? Looks great. We got a wire looped through the hoot nanny. I don't know that that's making the best connection. All right. So we got us a heat shrink crimp and we're gonna just roll with what was there because you know it's good and we're gonna potentially maybe heat shrink that later All right give her the beans i don't know if that's gonna do anything for the up and nothing for the down well we're sitting on the stall it's kind of proper how does it go up i guess we can forklift up what limit switch would prevent it from going up there's only that one switch right here on the end, right? Well, we got that switch, and then we also got the safety interlock. If it doesn't see, if it doesn't see the little kickstands are down, is that what would make it mad? Maybe. I think we need to see which way that continuity is supposed to be and check it. So snorkel is nice enough to have all their maintenance and wiring diagrams online for you. So now we get to chase some wires. All right, so some of the troubleshooting here, they give you basically to unplug some of these switches. This is the pothole switch, which I believe just makes sure that what they're calling the little pothole guard doodads down there, it's verifying that they're folding down. It wants to see 24 volts here to check the wiring, and there is indeed 24 volts there. So the bottom pins are open right now. We got to look at the diagram, see if it calls that normally open or normally closed. Because if it's 24 volts, you'd think if you unplug it, you'd have a problem. Like it would stop it if you unplugged it or broke the wires. So therefore, you'd want it the other way. Like if we jumped that, it would work. Unless that switch is stuck. Oh, you know what? That's not coming up all the way. That's why. That, that should help. Let's see if that's closed now. Because we, by sliding that up, it pushed into that switch. So these should have closed. Yep. Okay. That made somewhat of a difference. Maybe if it's like gets to the point where it's off of the scissor switch and it doesn't see that switch, it doesn't let it go any higher. Like that's its safety. Because it has to go up some before that's gonna that switch is gonna engage. We still have no uppy. And not that problem. Hey, it comes down. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go back. <laughs> hey, it quits going down. There's definitely. This thing has mine in tune, man. Surprise how fast it goes up. And then it doesn't. And then it, it did that. We got down. All we need is more up. One thing at a time. I'm curious if it does anything from the top. Not anything. I kind of wonder if our wiring harness has something all sorts of messed up and that's why it flexes it. All right, on to the next search. <laughs> There's gotta be some way 
You know what, there's a big flathead on this. I bet the front just comes off. Let's do that. How about that flathead? Any, mini, miny, mo. This one seems All decent. I believe in you. It's like I didn't see that one. Ooh. Oh boy. Look at that plug too. She's a little, she's a little crispy. You see this guy back here? This is the one going upstairs. Oh yeah, look, there's a broken off pin in it. That's a definite, definite no bueno. Time to start digging? Yeah. Well, these ones are actually labeled, and that's cool. What did I say power was, pin two? Uh, B and D. Well, that was on your round connector. I think it was two and four. Boy, that whole connector is just kind of angry. Grab that paper I had that had some of the... So, when we tore into the box here, it turns out there's one screw. Open the front of that box up is really convenient, actually. But the you can see the amount of corrosion package going on inside there. There's been some moisture and some water, but no big deal, nothing real bad there. This connector is the cable that runs up, weaves its way all the way up to the top platform. This is even actually after we cleaned out a little bit of the power connection, but it is pretty well terrible. So gonna try to pop that wire out of the back of that and see if we can more or less jump our way around the power getting in this. But right now we seem to be reliably lifting from the lower control. And so that's a, that's a big step forward. Basically we had a couple switches that were stuck over here, the pothole thingamabobs not coming out of the side was the main switch stop in the show and that was just oiling the actual linkage and getting those to move so now we can raise all the way up to the ceiling and lower it back down so now we just got to make it work from the basket yeah i guess that is the finger pincher saver because it always stops at that height let off the switch and wait for a couple seconds and then hit it back down and it comes down. So I think it means keep your hands out of the scissor. We think we got power to something, but it doesn't make anything move. Let's keep on checking. So today I just started basically trying to pin out the wires. I was able to find the correct wiring drawing for this, which is very helpful. Basically it is a S1930E when I looked at what is stamped on the side here in nice rustiness. When you Google that, you seem to find a much more correct wiring diagram. And it is basically what we found last night, that the wire, you have two bad wires. The power up here, which they call platform emergency stop, plat EMS, and then there's the feedback from the emergency stop. So right now, with these two alligator clips, I'm jumping power around the plug to the wire that ripped out back here. And I'm jumping power to the return wire because it's also screwed up. So I ordered two of those Deutsch connectors last night on eBay so I can swap that out. But in the meantime, I jump all that. And what we have now is if you time it just right, you can successfully get the wheels to turn on, which is a major step. But the joystick is not working as in the resistance does not change to the potentiometer in here. There's a reference between pins one and two on that connector, and it should be between zero and five volts and vary. I'm not exactly sure what means what. I think, you know, like two and a half is the middle of the road and then it moves up and down. Not sure. All I know is it's stuck at basically five volts right now. No matter where you put that stick, it's five volts. So I think it's like full steam one way. So you can get it to turn on if you're basically holding the dead man and then cycle the e-stop contact there, which cycles power to the joystick itself. There's like switches that work with the joystick that's supposed to help you, I guess it's like a safety feature. So when something like this happens, when the, when the potentiometer fails, it has another chance. And obviously that's both the dead man and the e-stop. But there's like forward and reverse switches that move with it. So something's going on inside that switch going to Try a different control block. Matt's gonna stop by later, I guess, with one, and we'll see what we can figure out. Right now, I think you need to replace this whole joystick. It can come apart. I doubt it's very serviceable in there, but 
I'll go ahead and show you what we do have right now. So basically, I think what will happen here is if we hold the dead man, cycle the yeast off. Woo, look at that! But you can see the joystick does absolutely nothing. But we have steering now. That's this toggle on top here that's working. But the tensionometer doesn't work, and when you switch this switch here to put it in platform up and down mode, you can't make anything happy to go to there. So, to step forward, try to swap some more parts around here. If I put that back there and then cycle that, there we go. And we have, we have drive, so progress. So Matt shows up here with some boxes that maybe have a prayer of working. And we go ahead and rig this up. Watch your toes, folks. Let's try her out. We got a hot wire kind of chilling on the ground and all that's beside. We're going to need to delete that if we want to drive. This is only going to need to go up. I'm stuck below this while I go through the ceiling. <laughs> oh, buddy. We ripping any uh, jumpers off the side? No, you look pretty good, bud. Oh, man. Oh, are the things not going down properly? Do I have to emergency drop you? I can still go down. <laughs> Maybe. She does that softening, though. That worked pretty smooth. wonder why it dropped. Looks like the little kickstands are coming out. Oh yeah, they are. Might just have to wiggle. There's that. Um... See, it's not liking it anymore. Oh, that's interesting. The pothole thingy. Yeah, there's like a. Uh... Yeah. See where that switch contacts the side of that bar? Like, oh yeah. Yeah, it's up again. It. Not out of the woods yet. Not out of the woods, but you can touch the ceiling. Yeah, that's definite improvement. It's better than no man lift. It's weird how it, like, wonder what is stopping it. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Now we'll go back up and hit that stop. It stops itself there. Then you can go back up. That seems odd. And that's a different place than it stopped before. Yeah, I'd say you got issues there, but Yeah, the pothole protectors seem to be working good. Yeah, let's see if it's drive. I mean, what can do at home? Trying for a drive mode here. Oh, buddy. We got her now. Probably for like a 10 second period. Something doesn't sound happy. It's fine. Let's take out some oh, you got something just wrapping the tire, that's all. Well, we're a lot closer. Back here on the snorkel mission, I got the new plug in and I'm gonna work on installing it. So I gotta get this guy unplugged from the box back here. And then this is a different style Deutsch connector plug where you have to pull out the little lock dude. That's where this tool comes into play. And then you got this weird goofy crimp tool for all of the pins and sockets. And I know we should be able to reuse a lot of them, but a couple of them did break off. So gonna need to replace those ones. Let's see what we get into. There's not a lot of room to get the old hands down in there. 18 different jumpers hooked up that we're making this thing operate. Hopefully, this plug working properly alleviates all those issues. <clears throat> you know what, I think I unplugged this round connector first. So this is what we're working with. 
See if I can figure out how to take this plug apart. I think you pull this guy out first and then those are just locked in. So I guess we might as well do the cheater method and see what the new parts look like. That is not that side, it is this side. So trying to figure out how this comes apart. I'm looking at the new guy, basically this is it. This is the front. That goes like that. We have our little weather seal, separate piece. So somehow we gotta pop that out of there and then we'll be looking down at the wires. Okay, that just pops out like that. You can see that pin, it totally broke off. This is the socket set, but the pin is broken off out of this plug, so we're gonna have to tear it apart as well and at least replace that one. That's where this wire was going in there and having all the issues to make this thing even try to move. All right, so this guy, oh yeah. She was not feeling so well. Yeah, okay. These are really easier to deal with than those other style. Just unclip that and then that pushes right out. The nice thing with the Deutsch connectors is unlike a weather pack where you have that separate sleeve deal, they're just sealing on this piece of rubber, basically this from jamming it in. So this side that has the socket and you can see that's in good shape. You might as well get this plug ready and just start kind of one for one transferring them over. That way we won't lose position. That was this hole. Yeah, there's nubbins down. the way and it should basically click in and you can see that little lock there that's what snaps in behind it and keeps it up in there so that's all there is to it keep working our way over so this guy is our new socket which I need to install on that one that ripped off the kit came with the open style like this guy with the little fingers and I'm not a huge fan of those. They seem to be finicky on getting those bent right. This is what I have for my weather packs. So I have these for the other Deutsch connectors. And they're the same size. Verified that on the socket. But basically, this is your guy. They'll, you put it in there and that thing will stop it right where it needs to be. And then you put it in here. And it'll force you to go through its full range of motion. It won't let you basically, if you go part way, it's stuck. You gotta, you gotta squeeze it all the way. You can see that puts a really nice crimp on that solid thing. Give her a little pull test and you're good to go. So that's why I prefer that enclosed style on the, on those pins and sockets myself. But I guess it is kind of a personal preference. I think people will tell you this style where it bites in there, that will hold technically a more pull and it's also corroded. I'm sure they all, over time, will corrode. This was our next pin. This was the first pin. Let's see if I can not get this all super tangled up. Last one on the swap over. Pushed in there. Get this guy in. Oh, you know what? Don't forget your little. Don't forget the little seal. They could get it on there after, but it's easier now. That's on there, and our lock goes in like that. And that is that side of the equation. Let's try to fix that other side of that plug. I think I need to at least take these screws out and get it to where I can see what's going on. So after looking at that again, I think the easiest way to get to those pins is just yank this whole box out. There's two bolts that come up through the bottom. Let's get out of the way. We can make our life easier by moving that out the way. Buzz it right out. Ooh. Ooh, she's not happy. That is definitely where we were having some issues. Two of the pins are completely gone. Three of the pins are completely gone. Let's get her fixed up. Strip that, recrimp onto it. Might need to cut a little bit back. It's like water and stuff basically worked its way back up that insulation. And 
It didn't like that. Still a little bit of bad wire there. We'll go up here and we're actually into some fresh stuff. Again, I'm gonna use the pins now, but still the solid style. Green tells you the size, the gauge these are. That guy's on, check them back in. Hopefully we're able to just reuse this plug that was there. I'm not quite wanting to come through there. I think a new socket is the smart way to go, but I would sure like to just wrap this project up at the same time. Now I like basically pulled it through too far and it's not wanting to go back. That thing's grabbing it. Redo that guy too. Fortunately, we do have just a little bit extra wire inside of this box to make this possible. Sling the last nice shiny new crimp in here. All right, she's locked in. And from what I can tell, there wasn't a wire in that bottom, this side. That's all there. Put our much less destroyed lock in. Must not have got all the pieces cleaned out from the last one, because it's not quite having it. It's also kind of destroyed from the way I was having to pry the other one out. So I don't really see, I don't know that we're missing any pieces per se. Trying to get this lock in there. It's gotta try a little harder, I guess. There it is. And that's the repin looking a little bit more fresh. Let's see if that made any difference. All right, let's just get this box bolted back in there and more or less we're done. We got a working man left, so I'm super excited. You can't beat the price of free. Traded a scrap engine, but we'll call it free. Lashed in. Flathead for that guy. <laughs> So I tried this trick where I put a little bit of water on the scissor lift and it grew. It's now a 60 foot boom lift. Ah, just kidding. It's still a scissor lift. But it is here with its friend, Big Snorkel. Been using it for a couple days now. A lot of jobs around the shop and everything seems to be going well with it. There's one seeping hydraulic hose that goes to the drive motors underneath and it's just been rubbed by this door here on this side opening and closing. So we're gonna pull that off and get a new hose made. Check it out, we have drive. So our snorkel man lift project all in all went very well. Uh, it needs a couple little things here and there. Like I said, that one hydraulic hose, I'm gonna change that out. Otherwise, I did put some deep cycle group 31 batteries in it, just two of those. And those have done really well here around the shop. There's only 300 bucks for the pair. So that's not a bad way to go compared to buying the four true golf cart batteries I guess it wanted you to have. It is a very well functioning man lift. It'll be very useful around the shop and it's easy enough to move. I like it. Thanks for watching and thanks to Big John's help and Matt at Diesel Creek for all they did on this mission.